There. Paddy Christie is with us. Good morning to you, Paddy. How's it going? How are you? You get to decide and vote then. Who's going to win that one? <laughs> uh, Kerry and Tyrone. Yeah. Uh, I still wouldn't go too far from Kerry. Mm. Yeah. Still got the pedigree there, you know. I think you're right. I think there's too much been made of the four months of Toronto, if I'm being honest. Like, the two lads, obviously, are uh, the Canavans are just off the charts. And I guess when you have those in your team, then everything becomes slightly more 50 50. But mm. I still think, like, Kerry won an All-Ireland last year they were very good I mean they couldn't have gone back that far and you'd wonder whether it's just they're just going through the motions for the last while but like when it comes down to it they see that Tyrone jersey they're going to you know I can imagine in Crow Park in a quarter-final with Tyrone I'd say they'll be well up for it mm. How are you um, we'll get to the Dublin Mayo preview in a little bit but how are you feeling about life after the year that you had it was geez, you were you were really close in both the Leinster Championship and the Talton Cup to to uh, coming up, you came up short narrowly against teams that ended up having a good run. Mm. Yeah, it was a strange one. Like we had a disappointing league, obviously, and then you went to the championship, obviously on a, a bit of a downer. But we came sort of regrouped and had a, quite a good performance with Offaly. And obviously, obviously, they went on to do quite well, like like well, reasonably. And then I suppose and the wheels came off for them as well. But like from that point of view, and from the down point of view afterwards in the Talton Cup, um, yeah, the down game. Like we felt we were really in that game for fifty minutes, and then you know they got a goal and they changed the game, but. You'd expect that them will be very very hard to beat in that uh, final, and I suppose if they win it. I might put a slightly different complexion on things. Um, like we, we felt we really played well in that first half, and I suppose we had a couple of chances that might have just put us a bit further ahead that we didn't take. Just the nature of football, but like um, it's it's a hard one to put your finger on. Where how do you feel about the year? Up and there was ups and downs along the way. We started off with a great O'Bourne Cup, and then uh, poor National League. Then it's at a half decent, uh, good decent performance against Offaly in the Championship. Then. A couple of good performances in Talton Cup and, and, and a poor one as well. So, like, it's a mixed bag. Can you take any positives from that league campaign? I know, like, Longford, I think, have been in Division 3 for, for eight years, so kind of made your home there. Um, but next year, face a Division 4 campaign, I guess, in one in one sense, it's a, it, promotion is the obvious target. Uh, and you could build up a little bit of steam, beating some teams, getting a few results. So, I guess there's positives to take from it as well. Yeah, well, you, you have to. I mean, there's always you can be always trying to put spins on things, and sometimes it's real, and sometimes it's it's artificial. Like the, I, I think it's a genuine. From my point of view, having been involved with Tipperary, the same thing happened. Went down to Division Four. Um, actually, started poorly in Division Four, end up getting momentum and winning a load of games in a row. Mm and getting to a league final playing well in the league final in Crow Park very very unlucky to be beaten by Cavan by a point and you know that was that was a very like that was a really really good year overall mm. and that gives you a bit of hope then when you're looking at that you're sort of saying yeah Longford can definitely do that um, you don't want to be down in Division 4 but realistically speaking the leagues don't usually lie like if you lose a number of games in the league you know you have to hold your hand up and say look we weren't good enough this year like yeah. is, is that is this the end of your second full year? No, no, this is first, first year. First, first year. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that wry grin is like, give me a chance here. I'm, uh, <laughs> but like, how, how, how is there? Is there? I was interested because it was in my mind before you mentioned it about that sort of particularly from a manager's point of view when you get to the end of the year and all bar one county has something negative to reflect on at some point or another um, and that balance of trying to be not to be comical alley about it that you need to actually own some of the stuff like a, a general sense of progression or what's your sense of like you're going to regroup again in what when when do you, when will you suppose back? October November is what, what your what your chat be with the group when you get back well I suppose the goals you, you you, you always start with goals like we would have started this year uh, or back in October last yeah. year November and you, you, your goals for the league for the championship for the Talton Cup As for us this year I was I was hopeful that we would get to a Talton Cup semi-final I felt that if we did that get to play in Crow, Crow Park is a big thing for me Like right. I saw the effect it had with Tipperary um, obviously they would have won a, a Munster in 2020 in an empty stadium uh, it was fantastic but it was an empty stadium but to go out to Crow Park mm. and play and play well I think that just brought brings everything on ultimately I suppose t the following year the Tipperary didn't go great but like I still think overall for a progression for a county for a so called smaller county and, and like the Carlos and the Wexfords and the Tipperaries and the Longfords and all the teams in Division 3 and Division 4 for them to play in Crow Park and play well it's a big deal so for me that was a big deal this year the fact that we didn't get there was disappointing and, and it's something that you want to go for for next year 
you've got a couple of chances now because you definitely feel that you can get to a Division 4 league final uh, and you'd be in Crow Park and you feel that you know with the, with a few things falling the right way you could get into a Talton Cup semi-final so therefore you know and I suppose realistically speaking if we'd have pipped off really this year we were beaten by a point in both league and championship and uh, in the championship this year if we'd have pipped off really, um you possibly could have got on to uh, into Crow Park as well but that's a big deal I think for, for, for that to, for the county to go on I think they need to get to Crow Park and play well in Crow Park. I know you would have been involved, Paddy, in, in different G- uh, summer camps and summers in, in Longford and stuff that would have maybe got you on the radar of, of people yeah, within yeah. the GA circles in that county. Um, what have the, been the biggest challenges for you managing a, a team like Longford? Even I think, you know, from a rural sense, I guess player retention is, is a difficult one year on year and trying to get lads to, to stay put and, and I guess getting that commitment. Is that one of the main challenges for you? Yeah, well, that's linked to belief. Like, if, you know, it's very, very easy for the Dublin and the Kerry's uh, you know, the Tyrone's of this world to, and even at that they still lose player, mm. players but like um, it's very very easy to justify for a player who's number even number 30 in the panel or 32 in the panel you know they have a good chance of success with those counties you know there's, there's, mm. there's a good bit of glamour involved you're playing in Crow Park regularly um, everything is sort of set up for you there whereas in the smaller counties you know, what a fella who's number twenty seven or twenty eight in the panel is the, is the same attraction there for him? Honestly, probably not. Mm. And that's the hardest thing because you'll always keep your twenty or twenty two uh, key players in the panel, and most of them are, are are getting football all the time. But it's very very hard to keep the other the other lads involved. We were lucky this year, like we we were. We, we lost a few lads here and there but we started off with a huge panel and we sort of kept it fairly well um, but like a lot of the smaller counties would lose players regularly particularly when it comes to April and May mm. And you have the allure of America and that sort of thing. So, like, that's a. Uh, I suppose that again, coming come back to your question, that's linked to confidence. Like, if somebody and belief, and if somebody believes that it's worth doing it worth sticking at it they're going to they're going to keep at it and that obviously has a knock on effect because if you get all those fellas committing then eventually it probably will happen and then you'll have genuine cause for um, having those beliefs but until then you're sort of treading on thin ice like it's it's yeah. difficult because any sort of a setback at all can knock you back a bit like if when Dublin underage players are coming through when they're 19 or 20 they honestly will, f- will fully believe they're going to win in All-Ireland because they've seen it right in front of them mm-hmm. But those smaller counties don't, so it's how to do that without being able to win all the time. And still, I suppose for me, from my point of view, what I try and do is I have a very good crew and the management with me, and we try to do good training sessions with the lads mm. and have it as professional as we can. And that's our way of trying to, you know, put in the very firm foundations for the future. And if they come back, to, if they want to come training all the time, you hope then eventually the results will come onto the pitch, and then you can start going further, further afield. Then. Mm. What do you enjoy most about management and who are you looking at in GA or in different sports as the people that you'd like to emulate? Um, the, the nice thing about the management, and I look after the Sigerson team in DCU as well, and I, I have the same thing in both. Um, I have a, a good crew of people around me and I enjoy that like it, it's lovely and, and I was very lucky I, I walked into that in Tipperary because I wasn't able to pick me on people but it turns out when I came in myself with other people there were some great mm. people around so I've been very lucky in that and that's something that I think um, I always want to try and be involved with because I always want to have an involvement with, with good people because it's very very difficult if you don't have that and what, thankfully I haven't had that situation as a manager but I've been in, I've been a player with setups where management didn't get on and you could sense it straight away you didn't even need to hear any rows or like that you just knew that it wasn't a good vibe around the place and I suppose that's important and as regards who you'd be sort of looking at like the, the lads who I would have always um I suppose in GA circles, I would be a big fan of Mickey Hart, and it's ironic that Tyrone are playing Kerry again this weekend, but I would have felt that. Uh, I took a, a Ballymun underage team twice, two phases, two 10-year phases. Philly McMattens is probably the most famous guy from the first phase, and then second phase will be um, when he was finished up at 21s was uh, we, Evan Comerford, Paddy Small, those sort of fellas were all on that team. And... Um, 
I suppose I would have felt in the second team we're a very strong team with, with those guys and a load of other fellas who played mo- double and minor double and 21s and I would have tried to copy Mickey Hart with a lot of stuff like right. I would have well, copy is a strong word but certainly would have taken little bits and pieces about what he said and what he did okay more more less on the tactical side is correct more, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I, I think I have to say now I'm, I'm not that strong tactically really uh, yeah I right. wouldn't feel that I'd be that and I brought in some very good people with me who are yeah so this year with Longford like I had Desi Sloan with me who'd be like I'd call him a master tech, tactician uh, like so he, I'd say he goes to sleep at night thinking about formations <laughs> yeah. and and you know how to uh, how to, to set up defensively and offensively like those sort of people are hard to get and I'd feel that I'm weak in that area so you get in other people who are good at it you know so um, there's more on the sort of leadership man management type yeah I think so yeah and trying to get I suppose um, trying to get players to develop things themselves trying to get leaders in the group themselves rather than trying to do everything yourself I suppose I, I would have learned with Ballymon I took the first team in 1996 97 that was Philly McMahon's team and I did an awful lot of stuff myself All right. and I felt that was good and I was in control of everything and it didn't really matter about anyone else but the problem with that sit- setup is and that system is, is that if you were ever gone then because these things will happen someone could move to a different country they could move to mm. a different part of the world they could get sick mm. they could die anything could happen and the thing about it is if, if that if there's not other good people around to carry it on, it doesn't work. Mm. So, like, I, I would be a big believer in getting really good quality people in so that it's not driven by one person and then having players doing that, players driving things and having them involved in it rather than you being sort of the be-all and end-all. I think that's, that doesn't work long-term. You mentioned Desi Sloan there. I know yourself and Desi were, were named on Declan Shaw's coaching ticket for, for the Mayo game. Yeah, that's know, right. I know Kevin, Kevin McStay ultimately got the job, but do you look back at that now in hindsight, and, and hindsight's obviously 2020, but with a bit of almost happiness that you, that obviously the Langford gig came about as a result as, as a number one role so was it was it better in the end that it that worked out that way or, or how do you look um, at it? I don't it's not, it's not something I've thought about mm. too much to be honest with you um, the, the only thing was when I was asked at the time to get involved I was finishing up with Tipperary so like I was, I, I'd done three years and I felt that it wasn't probably much more in me mm. with that um, just you know just run out of steam with things and you just wanted something different so I I I, I, I threw myself in with that but like um, was I looking at the results afterwards wondering whether it'd be good or bad to be involved no I, I honestly haven't it worked out quite well for me because Desi Sloan was one of the lads who was obviously mm. meant to be involved was on part of the management uh, set up um, for me well the, the one that was being drawn into the yeah, hat yeah. and and uh, obviously I ended up talking to him and then you know it, these things happen just yeah. little little connections like that and like I said you, you got him involved which like, like I feel has been a very strong addition to the, to the whole group so no I like the, from, a, from on a very practical level that's just to travel and involved would have been yeah, absolutely monster. savage yeah, as well yeah. don't get me wrong you do it particularly because you like doing it and that sort of thing but like Tipperary was a good old trip now sometimes like a lot of the time we were in Taurus other times you were in Clonmel yeah. and uh, Feathered as well we started doing sessions in Feathered near the end of a new all weather set up down there so like they're long trips and, it, and when you double them they become really long so I suppose three and a half hours to Mayo multiplied by two gives you seven like as a primary school teacher I know me basically <laughs> so like seven hours and then talk about your probably two hours on the pitch and uh, maybe a meeting afterwards that turns into it's ten nice. hours nearly yeah. and it's you know when you have a job like it's I'm uh, principal of a school so like it's not as if that you can just sort of say well look I can come and go as I please you're not, not going to do a Colin Rourke in it any time soon are you? Uh, I, I don't know well I, I could be left for just a school job because you wouldn't know no one might want me in the GA circle but like it, and maybe know. the school won't want me either I don't know but no, like know. It's, hard to, it's hard to manage all those things there are little sticking points during the year and like with the Sigerson say in with Sigerson in say January there and O'Born Cup mm. and then yeah. you're back in school and it, it, there, it just it gets to a point where you're just very very I felt at, at one stage that thank God I've got good people with me because in DCU and the Sigerson team we've some great people same with Longford and then with the school the staff are great in there so it's sort of 
those things can run themselves but you can't sort of step back forever and sort of say oh everything will be grand like you have to sort of mm. s- be still around Parnell Park would be a much handier option for you <laughs> <laughs> well no I, I'd say um, I'd say I'm I, I've, in, I've enjoyed this stuff with the smaller counties the so-called smaller counties and to be honest with you um, with with people are, are always giving you a bit of stick over that how come you wouldn't get involved with Dublin or whatever that sort of thing but it's just one of those things it's just falling that way and whoever whoever's involved they, they have a good crew guys there but like would you me, like to at some point it's, an, it's another one of those quite, like I've never a couple of people have said it to me but like it's not something that ever sits in me for some reason I don't know I, it's, it's, it's a weird thing maybe I shouldn't be saying this but like I played for 11 years with Dublin and then when I finished I went back and I threw me a lot in with Ballymore and I sort of forgot all about mm, Dublin yeah. it was as if like I, I still would know the lads down there and like John Costello was recently finished up but like John would be in contact with me over the years and it'd be, he, he'd be uh, help me with different things things like that so and I call down to Car- Parnell Park for to watch a match or some every so often not not often but every so often and the lads would be talking to you as if you were never gone but it's funny it just it's one of those I, I think the same happened with my old school I, I was in a school in Ballymun for 17 years and then next thing I was gone I was just bang just <laughs> it's as if yeah, like yeah. the shutters come down you drive on and you, you, you drive forward you don't look back maybe that's the type yeah. of person I am but it hasn't really ever it hasn't come across even when with, with, with Dublin matches people say oh where are you sitting a lot of the time I just I, I, to be honest with you I don't have the time yeah. but I, I'd find myself just sort of watching the game and I might every so often go out and go onto the phone or do something else it's not as I'm just not totally um, I'm, the, the, the Dublin thing sort of when you finish playing with me other fellas still are I think there's other fellas of my vintage mm. who are still sitting in the stand and still totally into it um, mm. me, me I, I suppose I just do different things in life and um, I put a lot into whatever I'm doing with ECU or the school or with Longford but then I sort of just the rest of it I just sort of step away from I think that might be to your advantage if you were to ever decide to do it again to be absolutely honest uh, do we bring you in specifically to preview Dublin Mayo I'm not so sure anymore if that was the case but we better leave you uh, with a question about it and what you expect to happen yeah um, I think oh, I'm I'm sh- fairly sure that Mayo are capable of beating Dublin in a once off game there's no, I, I don't think there's any doubt about that but if you were to ask me if, I, if, if to put me five me five euro me ten euro like I'd still be going with Dublin simply because I, I have this very long winded thing about the, the attacking power and the scoring threat and I, I Sure, the Longford fellas always be sick of hearing me talking about it, about scoring and training. I always think, I suppose, it comes from your baggage, mm-hmm. from your own career, and we would have had difficulties up front. And I'm sure the lads in the forward line at that time would say that they had difficulties in the back because of me, but like I would have felt that we didn't score enough with Dublin in my career. And then I've always think, thinking of that, I'm always thinking of that with other teams, and so it's with DCU and Longford. And I, I suppose to come back to Mayo I just wonder on any given day if they, if they have a lot of possession will they convert Like mm. because I know that with the likes of Conor Callahan and Paul Mannion and these fellas like you can't even be sure if they're all starting but like if they get a ball 20 metres out 30 metres out and they're one on one they're going to go by their man and they're going to go for goal like, mm-hmm. and you, you better yeah. watch out mm-hmm. I just don't know about like I think Ryan is a I don't know who there with Mayo has that sort of a look about him he's a bit of a buzz about him and, and Aidan O'Shea might blow hot there and on the edge of the square I still think traditional sort of man on the edge of the square could win a ball and do a bit of damage but their ifs whereas I think with Conor Callahan and, and those type of players Cormac Costello they're proven like I, I just can't if, if they get a lot of ball I think they're going to do a lot of damage Yeah, I think it'll be an awful lot tighter than the other game if I'm being absolutely honest that we were previewing a bit earlier on uh, loads of comments coming in here uh, and I'll leave it on Michael saying that he's perfect for the Dubs job in my opinion mm-hmm. very impressive band when you meet him and uh, I think there's a lot of that uh, same vibe coming in uh, real pleasure to spend the last 20 minutes with you thanks a million for coming no in no problem lads, thanks, lads. Thanks, nice being